welcome to the old courthouse museum, friends. This is pretty cool. Eighteen ninety. One thing I like to do when I travel is check out the local historical museum. That way it gives you a good idea of what the history of the area is and get acclimated pretty easy to your surroundings when you're poking around the area. Here we are in Sioux Falls and I really don't know much about Sioux Falls so I thought this was a great place to start. Guest book. Okay. Buffalo. Buffalo. I always like these critters. I've learned some facts about them over time, like they can jump seven feet straight up in the air from standing still. They can run very fast and don't get near them, but I've never seen a display about buffalo quite like this. It's all the parts of the buffalo that were used, like the bladder. Interesting, dried bladder. Buffalo wool, that makes sense. Ribs, yeah. see that? The horns, headdresses, that makes sense too. Uh, here's. Here's an interesting one. The scapula uses a shovel. Huh. Yeah. huh. Buffalo chips. <laughs> Buffalo stomach. Weird. Wow, a tornado put this piece of metal through a tree. And it's right here. South Dakota ranks ninth in the United States for tornado activities. Back in 1932, this was a product of one of those tornadoes. Wow. Cool old car. Back in 1908, the speed limit here in Sioux Falls was six miles an hour, four miles an hour around corners. Well, a 19 year old young man built this car during that year and it went 60 miles an hour and held five people. It, this was way outside of the boundaries of the law, I'm sure. This raised some eyebrows driving around town, but what a cool vehicle. Thomas Fawick. It's his ride. Nice work, Tom. He built this from scratch at 19 years old. That's crazy. Pathfinder Atomic Power Plant. Pretty neat information here about how they made electricity in the 50s, 60s. A little more about the downtown of Sioux Falls. Some history on the buildings in the area. Well, this is quite interesting. President of the Sioux Falls Chamber of Commerce, Lewis Warren, got the idea to make this geodesic dome that was going to be a science center for the city. He took the idea from Epcot's Spaceship Earth. thought that was quite interesting. Now, I've spent so much time right around that Spaceship Earth. It's weird to see it in some place so far away from Spaceship Earth. It was going to be called the Unisphere. It never, never took off. They didn't get enough investors to spend the money on it, and the project failed. But this is what it would have looked like. This is a very cool safe door with a ship painted on the front. That's painted. Yeah, wow. Stained glass all through this building. That's very nice. Okay. I have never seen an exhibit like this ever. This is just about beauty and the industry in the local area of haircuts and makeup. <laughs> Some old barrettes. Are those called barrettes? I'm not sure. My sister used barrettes. I think they were the smaller plastic ones with little designs on them. I'm not sure what those Bigger hair clip, maybe just a hair clip. I don't know. This is a cool setup. Old mirror. I'm not sure what that is, friends. Somebody, somebody, leave a comment and tell me what that is. It's got some heat controllers, and I think this goes over your hair. 
to dry your hair. I think it's a hair dryer. Not, not positive. Well, this is pretty neat. 1986 Wheel of Fortune hostess Vanna White was seen using a tackle box to hold her makeup in on TV. So the Plano company took this idea and made their own makeup boxes. Looks like a tackle box. It looks like a fishing tackle box. I've seen those before in my day. That makes sense. Razors, straight razors. There's a video feed of old cosmetics commercials playing in here. This is a neat exhibit. Uh, this is pretty neat. This is an old school barber chair. You see the leather where they'd sharpen the straight razors for a close shave and some of the things used in an old barber shop. The question has been answered. It is a hair dryer for sure. Right next to some other old hair dryers. Wow, that looks intense. What in the heck is this? Ladies, and maybe gentlemen, if you use a hair curler, check out these old school hair curlers. Tell me if you would use one of these yourself. This is the most modern one in the case. It's from 1980. I believe that my mom or sister had this exact one. They did not use hair irons like this. These look real intense. I could see someone burning their hair with one of these. You see how they're all burnt on the ends? You had to actually heat this metal up on a heater and I'm sure that these got out of control easily. I can't imagine uh, using one of these things. Partially because I'm a dude and I don't have any reason to use one, but this is, this is crazy. Aha, and barrettes. Yep, a little smaller with the design on them. Some really neat photos of the area. Unfortunately, these are some fires, but this one here with all the water frozen after fighting a fire, it's very, very cool. Back in 1885, this fire bell tower was hit by lightning, totally destroyed. Flooding has been a problem in the area as well, apparently. More fires and natural disasters. I'm gonna move out of this section to a more positive section of Sioux Falls. More buildings and their histories. It's pretty cool. You can check out some of these old buildings and see what the insides look like. This is where we're at. Hmm. I was talking to some of the people that work here in the museum and asked them if the building was haunted by chance. And they said, not really. They haven't experienced anything, but stories online state that, you know, there's a lot of sightings and things around here and they've had paranormal activity. People come in and check out the building, but nothing's really come of it. But they did say that right out here in this courtyard is where they had public hangings and they had a gallows that was built and then brought inside the building for storage. And all of it happened right here. Save the clock tower. And they did. That's the original hand to the clock. For 36 years, the superintendent of the city climbed 125 stairs once a week to wind the clock. That every week, that's 45 miles of walking over 36 years, upstairs and downstairs. It's a lot of dedication to time for your city.
for you kite flyers watching this, this would be an amazing place to do some indoor flying. It's totally wide open and beautiful. I'm not sure what this is. Maybe that's where you sat when you got questioned. I don't know. I did see online a cool feature about this light that to change the bulbs, all they do is lower it right down to the floor and you can do all your work on it. When this building was built in the 1800s, it used steam to heat through these radiant heaters. It was very high class at the time. Not many people had that. How about the women's rights movement? You can pick it here for yourself. This is my favorite sign. Well, at least the top line. During Prohibition, a local brewery started making non-alcoholic beer and failed, but this was one of those. Hop tea, low alcohol, it's supposed to be good for your health. But mainly it was a way to keep from this happening to all their beer, because this was happening. Sure glad it's not dry now. Some old eyeglasses from the area. Sunglasses. And more glasses. What we were looking at in the courtroom is the courtroom dock. There's two of them. Yes, it was used by witnesses and defendants in court cases. Now we're going way back to the Native American tools. Arrow straightener. This is a drill. I'm not really clear on how this would work, but it seems interesting. A handmade bow. Moose antler bowl. It's walking up to the third floor, the last floor, and I noticed this damaged mural on the wall. If you look around the rest of the museum, there's murals that have been very well taken care of. This is an example of what water damage has done over the years, but these are original murals all through the courthouse. And it's expensive, clearly, to maintain these, but they've done a really good job. So you've seen the damaged one. Take a look at the, the restored ones. Damaged and restored. Really nice job. We'll get a little better look, but you can see some really nice murals here in this hallway, second floor. Pheasant hunting is a big deal in this area. I've seen some reference to it in my travels over the last couple of days. Pheasant hunting was also the first type of hunting that I took part in. My friend Eric took me out know, about 15 years ago and showed me the ropes. Never caught on with me though. I didn't shoot a pheasant. It was unsuccessful in the day of hunting, but it was fun. This guy's happy to be out hunting for pheasants. These are pretty birds. A lot of pheasant gear. Pheasant hats, but the colors are amazing. Even the Sioux Falls baseball team is called the pheasants. You can ride a pheasant. <laughs> it's their photo postcard. It's pretty neat. <laughs> It's so weird. Cool. I don't know if I'd want to ride a pheasant, actually. I don't know if I trust them. They could be squirrely. I've never met one. I don't know what any of them are like. The pheasant exhibit is right in front of the courthouse balcony. We're on the last floor, but it continues going up to the clock tower. I really want to go all the way to the top, but it's closed off. Can't go. There's some of these murals you can check out on the way down to the gift shop. Mural of the Falls. It's beautiful. 
I love seeing these parts of the steps that are all worn down from so many people walking up them and down them over the years. A lot of the steps are worn down. No trip to a museum is complete without checking out the gift shop or the museum store in this case. Let's see what they have. Okay. Some local fairs, some books. This is cool. I like these local preserves. Honey, especially. Oh, I love honey. Got some cookbooks, mugs, t-shirts, earrings and jewelry, local historical books, old school children's games, and postcards. Definitely gonna pick up a few postcards. Yep. Okay, this is cool. And this one. Ooh, honey sticks. Gonna get a couple of these too. I love these things. Friends, the old courthouse museum was awesome. This is a really cool museum. It explained the area and history really well. Plus, I got some postcards to send to you if you're a Patreon subscriber of $5 or more. I'll send you a postcard from one of my travels every single month. It's a way for me to connect with you because I appreciate you being here and I appreciate you subscribing on Patreon. Friends, if you like what you're seeing here, hit like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. See you, friends.